Thank you. Yes, my name is Volker Berg. Last time I was here, I was uh, here for the Chaos Computer Club, but uh, this time I'm here for a Luxembourgish project, um, which is called Pretty Easy Privacy or PET. And um, I was asked to open this uh, panel, and uh, to open a panel about security is a little difficult today in these times, so uh, I want to start with the threats we are facing. Basically, I would say, sounds a little negative, but security and privacy is gone. We have to face that, again, this is a Chinese laptop. You can see it because of the trademark here, right? So we all have Chinese hardware with Chinese hardware backdoor. We have US software and we European got a little lost in the whole game. Um, you saw it, well, safe harbor is gone now. Now we're really into trouble. We have to act, I think. To be honest, I see that as a big chance that safe harbor is gone for Europe. No one is talking about, but we Europeans could now invest in data centers here in Europe, and the technology is now out of the shell, because the front running is already done. So I cannot see why this is not happening yet, or I hope I will see that it will happen, because that's one of the biggest chances I ever saw in IT for Europe. So let's see how that develops. But actually, now some court in Luxembourg decided security and privacy is gone. That's true. That's how it is. So, well, yes, I will not comment on it anymore. Court did already. We all read a lot about what the Sci-Fi's are doing. Again, the Russians do it too. The Chinese do it too. It's just as Europeans, we are behind. We're just following the US, doing what they call us, and that's it. And as a result, we have three issues instead of two. So, well, that's how it is. Um, to make that clear, one of my favorite slides, because it's so true, the X509 catastrophe, we have to face it. We all depend on HTTPS. You know, that's when in your web browser, it gets green, so you're safe because it's encrypted, right? What is that? Basically, it's TLS. It's uh, the new name for SSL. Well, it's not so new anymore. It's more than 10 years now, but, but they changed the name. But okay. And TLS is based on X509. I got plan for emails. And that means we are all trusting in certificate authorities, even if we don't know that we trust in it. And the concept is if one single certificate authority is taken by someone who is unfriendly, then all security is gone. In all web browsers, one of the certificate authorities is Chinese Internet Network Information Center. That's what we all trust in. I'm pretty sure the NSA does not own a CAA certificate authority. For sure, they own more than one, right? It's not only one. So, well, what do the Russians do? I will not comment on it. So that's how it today is. That is what we are all facing. One thing was taken, that was, that was it, and for sure, Many of them are taken. So protection is compromised, and we have basically the situation that we have to reconquer our hardware back. It's the next issue. We all buy U.S. hardware, but the U.S. moved the whole production plan to China. There is nearly nothing. Apple is now reverting a little, but this device is made in China. It's written in very small letters here. But actually, that's how it is. So we will have to reconquer our hardware, our devices, or everything else is useless. We have to do it. I hope in Europe we will see, not kidding, 
IT production play. That's what we need now, or we are done. We are behind. It's a little better with reconquering the, the, our software base because there's free software. We are way better in reconquering the software than we are in, in reconquering the hardware, bit, where we even didn't start yet. So free software is a huge opportunity for Europe just to support it, to invest in it, because that makes us independent from the other players. That gives us some power back. And the last one is, please face it, we will not get the network back full stop. It will not happen because all the lines are controlled by other powers. Well, many of them by the English, and now you can define if UK is part of Europe or not. I think that discussion is a common discussion inside UK, um, if how, how European they want to be and how not, but actually they are part of Five Eyes, and this is, they're more on the US side when it comes to such topics than on the EU. So we lost the network case already, never will get it back, forget that. We are not driving that infrastructure. It's done by other people. So what can we do? Pep wants to be a little helpful here. As a Luxembourgish project, we have the idea, where can we help here? So we took the third point, it's the most hopeless point, but it's most easy to apply something here that we can help with the situation. And that's what I uh, will introduce you here. In our view, it's just wrong how it is today. When today we are communicating with Skype, we are communicating with email, we're communicating, sending WhatsApp messages, communicating, using web services and stuff. But the default in the internet is that is unencrypted with the exception of X509, which is done. So the default is, well, we are lost. And how could we change that default? How can we, in a German saying, put that from standing on the head to the feedback on the ground? How could we do that? And that's the idea of pretty easy privacy, because pretty good privacy is already there for many years. The idea is, how can we make it that the default is right? You write a letter, press, and the letter arrives, and this was encrypted. You did nothing. It's just working, and the encryption is safe, and it's not X509 based, at least not CA based. And that's the idea of pretty easy privacy. I have some demonstration here, because we are now very close in that, uh, oops in that project to release, I have here a box, a virtual box with Windows and Outlook because that's very common in business. And now I show you there's nothing besides Windows and Office default installation full stop. And I'll show you how easy can encryption be. We count the mouse clicks. It's one for accept the license. It's two for install. It's three for yes. I, I want to do that here, Microsoft guys. I didn't click that because uh, I, I'm funny. Okay. And four is finish. That's it. So with four mouse clicks in a sequence, your Outlook starts to encrypt the default. You do nothing. I start Outlook here. Hopefully. Here, very good. Bye. I said bye. Okay. Now it looks as slow as usual. Very good. Okay, I'm taking that one. You see, I do nothing, I just write text, right? I do, as the users do, I write some message and present. Whoops, it was encrypted. How did that work? 
I did nothing, right? One of the group. Again. Boom, now it gets the color. What's going on here? This project is a come out of crypto party movement. If you don't know us, in the crypto party movement, we teach interested people how to use safely cryptography tools. And after teaching that for many, many years now, the idea came up just to write down what we teach, how to use those tools. And if you write something down in IT, you can call it a protocol. And then we can write an engine which just implements the needed steps, how to safely communicate with encryption. And this engine is the PEP engine. That's the basic idea behind PEP, that your computer has a software which is not a crypto software. I'm using here common crypto software, in this case, NuPG, because I'm simulating with a P2P um, contact, but we are using common crypto software, but added another piece. And a piece we added, the PEP engine, is driving that crypto software for the user. So there's a lot of things happening here in the background, right? If P2P is right here, you know that, well, there was no key pair, so we created one, of course, with secure algorithms, enough key lengths, not the default, which is bad because it uses the wrong hash algo and, and stuff, you know, so we configured it. Next thing we did is we had a look on the key service. There's the key for the other guy, right? This is what we teach people how to use something like P2P. But we don't do it only for P2P. We do it for P2P. We do it for SMIME. We do it for GNUnet. We do it for a list. We do OTR. We do it for a list of common crypto tools. So what we are writing here in Luxembourg is not new crypto software. We are writing a software which drives crypto software for the user, and that's PEP. Why does it get yellow? Yellow means there is technically no single known attack anymore on planet with one exception. You could be man in the middle. Technically, this crypto is perfect for all what we know. So we have a rating engine inside the PEP engine, so we can rate such stuff. And of course, with the next update, it may lose its color because there's a crack now. Algo was broken or whatever, so we write for all what we know. So yellow is perfect. We all know green is better than yellow on our traffic light, but okay. Why is it only yellow when it's perfect? Well, there is an attack which is not depending on a perfect crypto. It's called man in the middle. Man in the middle attack means you have a perfect crypto technology connection to the attacker. And the attacker has a perfect crypto technology connection to your communication partner you expect it to have to. And that is checking to whom I'm communicating here, really. Is it I'm communicating to the partner, I think, or is it some attacker? And that's the difference making it green. You see, we have some issue for the US market. We solved that now. But that's the old dictionary here. We have to manually overwrite that. That's the idea. That's 10 verbs you can phone call, ask the other guy, do you see exactly the same 10 verbs? If yes, then there is no attacker. Then you can make it green. And from then on, it will remain green. And it will remain green on all my devices. And if I'm the IT department of a company, it will remain green for everyone. So that's a one shot forever. That's basically how it is. If you ignore such things, you're already safe with the exception of man in the middle. When you just ignore that thing, just writing text and press send, right? You do nothing. So that's basically the idea of the project. Oops. And we not only do it, I hope this will work. Can you see anything? Yes, the wrong thing. Oh, nice. 
I think my PowerPoint lost its organization. So we're not doing that only for Outlook. We also do that with a partner in Toronto, Canada together for the iPhone. We do it for different platforms, I would say. And this is something we already have a big partner here. We are partnering together with Enigma Mail. The next version of Enigma Mail will sport a PEP engine as default. For the people who don't know Enigma Mail, Enigma Mail is the PGP plugin for Thunderbird, Mozilla Thunderbird, which is the email sister of Firefox. And this thing, Enigma Mail, is around about 80% P2P market, planet-wide. So around 80% will have, with the next release, a PEP engine. That, that deal is already done. What you see here is the press release with it together with Enigma. We have other partners, too, already, because there's a second big email client on Linux desktop. Behind Thunderbird, it's called Contact or K-Mail or Color System, and we have a deal with them too. Next major release will support a PEP engine. So to be honest, on a, at least on a Linux step, desktop, it will be hard to evade PEP because that's 99% market share now, the two of them together. But also on Windows and on Macintosh, we have a good standing for the beginning with the Thunderbird solution and with the Outlook solution. A member of our staff responsible for, well, selling the Outlook solution is Simon Witt. In his former job, this guy was selling Outlook itself. He's the former um, enterprise sales boss of Microsoft, Planet Web. So Simon joined our team, and uh, after selling Outlook, he has now to correct that and sell PEP engines into it, right? <laughs> so what is PEP behind the curtain? In short, PEP is like PGP. What is PGP? Well, it's a standard, it's a product from Symantec because they bought it. It's a lot of things, right? Many products are following that. So what is PEP comparable? It's different things. It's, for one, it's an engine with an adapter, so we are adapting into the programming environment of the application programmer, so we can animate application programmer to put that in because it's very easy to put in. And we want to animate people who make messaging apps, which are commercially, as well as people who make messaging apps, which are free software. So we're driving that really we want to create a new standard in the internet that the default will be encrypted and not unencrypted anymore. And on top of that, you have then plugins or patches or whatever. The engine has some features. It has all the key management nonsense you do as a user. It has that trust rating idea that we rate if that is a good encryption or not. I ignore that. That's basically the engine, and additionally, it will support not only email, it will support any messaging concept. So that is really a trying to move the internet market into a totally new position. That's not only for email, we are doing OTR with uh, ISMPP and WhatsApp, for example. We do SMS encryption as well. So. For PEP, that's, that's text messages, and the approach is to encrypt text messages as default. We also have a transfer system for that, of course, when we need that, supporting different what we call transports for messages. And, oops, we have an encryption system, of course, for the different encryption standards we're using out of ready-made software. We don't implement encryption with ourselves usually, with the exception here of NetPGP, because NetPGP was just unusual, so uh, we fixed that. We deploy that on iOS. There's now a, a usable version of it. So 
This is not happening like it's before because it's now end-to-end -end cryptography only. We totally have no single central infrastructure servers. We don't offer any service. It's really something you have locally on your client, on your phone, on your tablet, on your PC, on whatever, on my Mac. And that's it. And only well-tested implementations, only open source, only free software, and only you have the keys. The keys never leave you a device for nothing. And they are not managed centrally. For sure not. Not anymore. That has to stop. So this is what we have in mind directly helping ourselves with products. And we want to connect. So we really have an eye on compatibility. PEP has its own crypto standards because we hire crypto whenever possible. If two people have PEPs, this at last will go through UNET, which is fully anonymized. There will be no MIPA data. Even, not only encrypted, and of course, perfect forward secrecy, but if the other guy does not have PEP yet, maybe something else, we support it for being compatible so we can switch that default. So the key elements are, it's seamless and fully automated. You do nothing. It's the job of the machine to keep you safe. We do that together with other standards. And maybe the most important thing, we make it the default. And that's that. So if you have any questions, I'm very happy if you want to ask me, or I will be uh, at the Digital Echo um, workshop afterwards. Thank you very much.